There are some people who aren't scared of anything at all. One such person was a soldier called Trousers. Private Trousers. One day, Private Trousers was summoned to see the general of his army. Uh, ah, uh, trousers, said the general. Ah, uh, the thing is, old fellow, we've decided not to have an army anymore. No. I'm getting bored with it, and, uh, and so are all the other generals. So we're going on a nice long holiday by a nice sunny beach, and uh, we don't need you anymore, so off you go. Cheerio. Poor Trousers had been in the army all his life. He didn't know how to do anything except kill people. But, as nothing worried him, he went to look for a new job. First he got a job at the Baker's. Trousers walked straight in and said, Had a way then, Mr. Baker, kidder. You just tell me who you want killing. Uh, 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 no, there's no killing. You, you just put those loaves in the oven. <laughs> what, and then I kill them afterwards, do I? Uh, no, no. Uh, oh, never mind. Just get out of here. So he got another job with a gardener. The gardener gave him a lawnmower. Well, how do I kill people with this lawnmower? Kill people? What are you talking about, said the gardener. We're going to plant nice little flowers and, and grass and nice little hedges and... Well, you can't kill people like that, man! Call yourself a god! And so it went on. And Trousers was useless for any normal job. He had nothing in the world. Well, he did have two things. One was a wonderful pair of boots made of buffalo leather. And the other was a trick he could do on Thursdays. But uh, I'm not going to tell you about that yet. Except to say, he had learnt it from the warty Welsh troll of Abergavenny, ah, who had jumped on him once and tried to eat him. Ah, but Trousers was such a brave soldier, he'd completely bashed the troll to bits. Why, why no, no, enough bashing, Ooh, enough bashing, the troll had said. Stop it or I'll never find all my bits. I'll tell you what, man. No, no, stop now. I'll tell you what. No, no, woman knows. I'll give you a magic secret to do on Thursdays if you stop. And so he did. And the secret with something you'll find out later. Anyway, one day, Trousers was walking in a forest and realised he was lost. But he kept walking until he saw a man in a pea green coat sitting on a fallen tree trunk, crying his eyes out. Trousers thought about killing the man, but thought it wouldn't be polite, not without saying hello first. Well, hello, wimpy, snivelling person said Trousers, and gave him a friendly poke in the eye. Oh, I noticed that although you've got a stupid-looking coat on, you have good boots which are very well shined. Hey, but they're rubbish next to my boots, man. Mine are made of buffalo leather. Oh, and I made the buffalo give me the leather himself. Hey, you wouldn't like me to kill you, would you? And the man shook his head and carried on snivelling. Well, couldn't I just kill you a little bit? The man shook his head again, still snivelling. <laughs> well, nice chatting to you, you pathetic little twerp. But I can't stay any longer. I must go and search for food because I haven't eaten for a whole week. So, Mr. Shiny Boots, if you could just tell me where this road leads to. I don't know that myself, the man said. I've lost my way in the forest. <laughs> Well, then you're in the same mess as I am. Let's stick together, man, and stop snivelling. And they walked further and further until night fell. <whistles> oh, it's dark. I'm scared, said the man. Oh, I should up, said Trousers, and bashed him with a tree in a friendly sort of way. Look, there's a little house on the hill. We'll go and stay there for the night. It looks deserted, so we'll be perfectly safe. So Trousers dragged him into the house by his head. The house was quite empty, so they tiptoed in and out of all the rooms, looking for food and nice things to sleep on. But they'd only been in the house for two minutes when they heard a horrible, fighting, arguing, burping noise, and twelve huge, terrifying robbers burst in with their mum, who was even worse. Quick as a flash, shiny boots and trousers hid behind the stove and watched as the robbers sat themselves straight at the table without washing their hands 
and started banging the cutlery up and down, yelling very rudely, Que so dinner! Que so dinner! Que so Que so dinner! They were all terrible looking creatures. There was one eyed day, moldy teeth, Ken, no head, Jeff. He didn't say much. The horrid mum brought in some dishes of roast meat, and the robbers stuck their great fists into the dishes and started gobbling the food, not using their knives and forks or spoons or anything. And remember, they hadn't washed their hands. Disgusting. When Trousers smelt the delicious roast, he whispered, What dare is it? It's Thursday. Shh! Thursday? Ha <laughs> ha! And Trousers began to laugh loudly. <laughs> and when the robbers heard the laughing, they threw their knives and forks up in the air. Not for any reason, just to make a spiteful mess. And they leapt to their feet. Aha! <laughs> Said Runny Nose Ron. Strangers! Just you watch out because when I get hold of you, I'll smash your noses and then I'll smash your ears and then I'll smash it. Oh, do be quiet, said Trousers. And mind your manners when you talk to me and wipe your nose. Get out the way. I'm going to eat your supper. The robbers were completely shocked. No one had ever been brave enough to talk to them like that before. And Wobbly Belly Bill was the first to recover. Blub, 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 blub. I can see that you're not afraid of anything. Well, you can have some food. But after that, right, you have to die, right, just for sheer cheekiness. <laughs> well, we'll see about that, man, said Trousers, and sat, at the, and sat at the table and ate all the food. <laughs> After trousers had eaten, he grabbed a bottle of the best lemonade from the very biggest robber. He waved the bottle in the air and shouted, Freeze! And the robbers froze, as if they were made of stone. And that was the special trick that trousers could do on Thursdays. Shiny Boots came out from behind the stove and said, Oh, oh, oh you might have told me you could do magic tricks and I, I wouldn't have been so frightened. Well, you stick by me and you'll be all right, said Trousers. And gave him such a friendly slap on the back that Shiny Boots fell over and broke off his teeth. Okie dokie, time for brave action, said Trousers. And he grabbed a horse and a long rope and wound it round and round the frozen robbers and tied it tight. Then he picked up the bottle, drank a mouthful and shouted, Easy Earth, which is freeze backwards. And instantly, all the robbers were able to move again. And they tried to run away, but because they were all wrapped up in the rope, whoopsie daisy, bonk, they fell on the floor. Then Trousers fastened the end of the rope to the horse and whispered to it, Good horsey, gallop as fast as you can to the king's prison with these ruffians. Hold on, said Shiny Boots, I want to tell the horse something too. And he whispered in the horse's ear, and the horse galloped off, kibbity clop, kibbity clop, kibbity clop, grinning, hoo hoo, kibbity clop, kibbity clop. And the tied-up robbers went hopping behind. Whoa, whoa, scrapey, scrapey, all the way to prison. Well, what did you tell the horse, shiny boots? That's for me to know, and you to find out. Don't be pathetic. You've, you've probably confused it now. Oh, we'd better follow after it and check that it does go to the prison. I was going to follow it anyway, said shiny boots. Oh, were you? Well, you're very brave, all of a sudden, said trousers, hitting him on the head with a spoon. And they rushed off after the horse. When they approached the town, Trousers was amazed to see a whole crowd of people pouring out of the town gates. They were all shouting for joy and waving banners in the air. Well, what can this mean? He said. Don't you know? Shiny Boots replied. The king of this country has been away for a long time, but today he is returning and everyone has come out to meet him. What nonsense! I can't see any king! You're always saying stupid things, you great idiot! And Trousers picked him up by his feet and bashed him on a wall several times. Silly, sissy, donkey head! Where is the king? He is here, answered Shiny Boots. I am the king, and I have sent a message to my people with the horse that I would be arriving home today. Then he took off his green coat. Underneath were royal robes of purple silk and blue velvet. 
trousers fell to his knees in fright. <gasps> Forgive me, your majesty. Here I've been knocking you a boat and calling you shiny boots, and I'm so terribly sorry. But the king brought him to his feet and shook hands with him. One of the reasons I ran away was because I was too cowardly to be a king. <laughs> but I've learned to be less of a coward from you, my friend, Buffalo Boots, because you are very brave. From now on, you can live like a prince in my spare palace. Whoa! Anyone there I can kill? No, you have to stop doing that. Oh, okay, dokey. I taught you to be brave, so you can teach me how to be just normal. Just what? Normal. Normal? Yes, normal. And so it worked out beautifully, and they both became wonderfully normal. Just like me. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. 